Previously, we completed all of the soldering of LEDs, resistors, IC sockets, capacitors, and all the supporting components up here in the microcontroller area, all the way through to and including the RS-232 sockets. So the last step before we proceed with beginning to uh, assemble the kit, uh, the layers and soldering in the um, red and blue toggle switches, is to insert all the integrated circuits. Now, as the assembly guide says, uh, this is critical that you do this before you start mounting the toggle switches. Um, you'll see that there's these in this bottom row of, in, of IC sockets, they're pretty close to the toggles, and the toggles have a metal plate, mounting plate, that actually sits over the top of uh, the ICs, making them very hard to insert afterwards. It is possible if you put a foot wrong, but it does require bending the metal plates on the toggles, and I really don't recommend it. I've done it to prove it can be done, still don't recommend it. All right, so there are three different integrated circuits that come in the kit. There are six of these uh, 74HC595s. There are four of the 74HC165s, and just a single max 3232. We'll put that one in last because it goes in the back. The others all go in the front. And because of the orientation, as per the silk screen, and hopefully the orientation you uh, took care to get right with the IC sockets, according to the printing on the chip, or at least the set I have at the moment, they all appear to go in upside down. So let's begin with the six of the um, 74HC. 595s. Now these power the LEDs. So you can follow the traces back from the LEDs to correctly identify the sockets that these are going to go into. But they are U1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So obviously I took, uh, must have taken some care to put them in the right numeric order. So U1 through to U6 will be where all the 595s go. Now, if you're familiar with this procedure, you don't really need to listen to me uh, teaching you to suck eggs, but if you're new to this, then you might want a few tips on how to set up uh, the ICs to insert in the sockets. And the only reason why that takes a bit of consideration is the ICs are always shipped with the legs slightly splayed, and they are not ready to just simply drop in and push down. Uh, in most cases, uh, you'll find that they uh, sort of sit over the edge of the IC socket and are not right in the middle of the receptacles for the pins. Now, everybody's got their own technique or seen something and, and prefers it, and you should just go with whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you're familiar with. But if you haven't really um, got that experience yet, I'm gonna show you a couple of different techniques. One method with the board placed firmly down so you're not going to flex it um, with other components on the bottom pushing back. It's just to set one row of legs in on one side of the socket and then using a fingernail or some other um, firm object, just spring the pins on the other side into the socket so that the chip is now has all of its pins sitting in a socket. The last thing you want to do is push down on this, have one of the legs of the IC fold in underneath or splay outwards, having to remove it, fix it up and put it in again, by which time you're starting to weaken the legs and you run the risk of snapping one of them off. So before you proceed with this, really have a good look and make sure that all the pins are sitting, looking fairly comfortable in the right places and you should be able to sl slide the component back and forward just to get the pins right in the middle of their receptacles. Now, at this point, if you take your fingers off the component, there's a chance it might jump out because it's under a little bit of tension. But when you're confident that it's in the right place and the board's as flat down on the surface as you can make it, just apply even pressure downwards on the IC and it should push into the socket. Now, this will work most of the time and you don't need to do any more bending than that. But if you're uncomfortable with this process, what some people like to do is take the IC and lay it on its side on a firm surface and then just roll it towards 
the desktop a little bit just to put a little, uh, just to bend those legs a little more perpendicular to the body of the IC. Now the risk is with this, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with this and the tension that you're feeling for, you can overbend the legs. Um, so, you know, but some people, and I've used this technique for a long time and it's probably the one I use the most. When you've got them in the right place, you'll find that the component just sits on top of the socket quite nicely. It's not under tension, so it's not gonna spring anywhere. Again, you can slide it back and forward just to make sure it's really centered. And then same as the other technique, just apply even pressure down to click it into place. So I'm gonna probably take the quick method, which is just lining up legs on one side, using a fingernail or something else, just to put click the legs on the other side into the socket, line it up, center it, and push it home. Oh, and there we go. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This technique can result in a leg not pushing down successfully and getting bent out of shape. So at this point in time, you've really got to take care to um, very evenly lift the component out of the socket. That may require getting a tool like a screwdriver or tweezers underneath the component. to help lift it. And right now, you know, everything is in jeopardy because we could easily start bending legs all over the place here. So you can see I've made a real mess of this leg and I need to now go and get my pliers so that I can straighten it out. So you're unlikely to fix a leg like this with your fingers. You're gonna need some long nose pliers of some description. These ones happen to have a bend in them, that's not necessary. And you're gonna to have to very carefully uh, fix the bends in that leg and do your best to bring it in line with the other legs on the IC packet package. Now at this point, I would not proceed with the same technique. And this is where I guess I've got a personal preference for this method, where I just put a little bit of a roll on each side of the IC on a firm surface. Don't do this directly on a tabletop, you're likely to mark the table, um, but use a cutting mat or a wooden board and just massage those legs so that they're all as well in alignment as possible, keeping a close eye on that leg that got damaged. Drop it into place, a little bit of support on that damaged leg and pushing it home and it's still riding up a little bit. So I'm really gonna to have to work hard to get this one in. Right, well the best thing I can probably do there is break out my multimeter and from the top of that leg to the base of the resistor where the trace is going. Um, just test for continuity. And that tells me that that leg's got enough of a contact into the socket, but you know, I'm not very happy with that result. So for the remaining components, I am going to proceed with the technique where I roll the legs down a little bit, just to straighten them up, making them more perpendicular to the plastic package before I go ahead and put them in place and push them in. Now you'll notice I've got my uh, LED spacer in place here because in the process of doing this, I noticed I managed to bend one of the LEDs over again. So you know, don't be throwing that out until the end because you want it handy just to keep realigning LEDs if you are knocking them about. Make sure you concentrate on keeping the um, orientation of these components the right way around. And as per the silk screen, the sockets, and now the ICs themselves, the dimple that marks the top of the um, component should be um, aligned with the silk screen or facing down the, the circuit board in this direction.
So the first five are pretty easy because they're sort of centered roughly under the LEDs. Um, but U6, just keep your eye on where that's going because uh, there's a lot of other sockets in that general area and you don't want to misplace that one. So here it is, U6 on the silk screen, the um, circuit board traces leading off to those LEDs. And that's in quite easily. Now the remaining four on the front of the PCB are all the 748C165s. So um, proceeding exactly the same way, I'm gonna use my preferred technique, just roll the legs on the legs to make it a little more perpendicular. Get them around the right way. If they don't fit in the socket, just keep bending. If you bend them too far, you'll just have to work out some way to straighten them out again. They do push in a lot easier when they are a little more vertical. If you don't like the idea of this at all, there is a tool that you can purchase. Uh, I think I've seen it on Amazon, maybe eBay, costs under $10. And it's a kind of hand grip thing that you put the IC in and press two sides together and it bends the legs for you and it won't overbend them. Um, if you're gonna be doing bending a lot of ICs in your life, then maybe it's worth the investment. If it's just this project, uh, and you don't imagine you'll be bending a lot of ICs again. I don't know that it's worth the money or the weight for getting to get that, um, as this technique, as these techniques will work well enough. And lastly, we've got that Max 3232 to put in the reverse side, the back. It requires exactly the same treatment. And again, just remembering to get the alignment with the silk screen, the socket and the dimple in the plastic housing of the IC itself all lined up towards the same end as of the PCB as where you find the micro SD mounted. Check we haven't bent any of the LEDs out of shape. Everything's looking good. I think it's time for a quick test.